This may seem like a perfect island of paradise. However, this mystical island holds a very dark and dangerous past, steeped in conflict, conquest, and the ancient art of black magic. Reaching back to the 10th century, legend has it the last king of Bali, named Dalem Bunkuk, became the spectral Ratu Gede Mas Makaling, the great lord with golden fangs in the afterlife. He was banished to Nusa Penida for delving into the forbidden arcane dark arts. His very name still strikes an unsettling chill into the hearts of some Balinese who dare not utter it aloud even to this day. The island was once purged of harmful spirits by high priests, but the ominous essence of Ratu lingers in the sacred Ped Temple. To this day, as of rite of passage, every Balinese Hindu must make a pilgrimage to this sanctuary at least once in their lifetime. Welcome to the Island of Priests, a literal translation. A Dutch colonial map of the 1900s shows Nusa Penida as Bandit Island, likely because it was used for a remote exile for criminals, political pariahs, practitioners of the dark arts, and undesirables. The reputation even captured the imagination of pop culture, featuring a 1950s comic strip, Tintin by Bob Demore. A long adventure. A little about me, I sold all my possessions back home in Canada, and I took one backpack and left for Bali and haven't looked back. I've been traveling around, and now I found myself on this little getaway weekend trip to Nusa Penida. And it's I'm going to share with you where to stay and how to get there and who I go with and much more. So let's go. I'm on the edge of Bali coastline here in Senur. Just trying to catch the last boat to Nisa Panita. It's about 4.20 and the ferry leaves at 5. Almost there now. It's actually a trinity of islands. Three. There's Nusa Panita, but you also have Nusa Lambongan and Nusa Senegan. And I chose to visit Lombongan. And once you get to the island, you probably are gonna get your feet wet. So make sure you have some flip-flops and you'll be able to rent a scooter. Get there early in the morning so there's lots of scooters available. The first thing you'll notice when you get here is the people are just so happy. Tourists are happy, locals are happy, everyone's happy. And it's probably because there's no urbanization. So I'm currently here on Lombongan, which is known for its surfing and its scuba diving, world-class scuba diving and surfing. And then Panita is the larger of the three islands, and Senegan is the smallest. The, there are secret beaches on all three, and all the islands offer unique, different things. So really, you need a good two, three days to explore all three islands, if you can. What I couldn't believe is the super hosts available on Airbnb are absolutely phenomenal, and there was a lot of them to choose from last minute. And the prices are really reasonable. You're looking anywhere from 27 uh, down, maybe even $20 for some. I found a super host for 28, that's where I'm going now, you'll see it in a second. And then I found that the next day another super host for $48. I actually enjoyed bouncing around from B&B to B&B, so you get a different experience each time and you can really see the whole island. It was fun exploring and actually even an adventure trying to find the B&B. Uh, I, this, later in the evening here, I rented a scooter after my taxi ride so I could travel around myself. And uh, it's quite easy to find. You'll get them around seven to ten dollars. <laughs> nice. Cool. All right. <laughs> And because it's an Airbnb, breakfast was included as free, and uh, this is the breakfast dining room. It was an incredible morning. And then later on in the day, I decided to go down into the main part of town and check it out. And there was every kind of traveler you could think of. 
There was babies, there was adults, there was uh, all ages. So it was time to find the second Airbnb. And this is the second Airbnb here. Uh, later in the day, I, this was called Dodal. And it was, uh, this one's $48 a night. And it was big, it was spacious, and I so, slept like you wouldn't. All right, made it. Literally, this is on the edge of the world. I don't know how I found this place. It was very hard to find. So when you come to this island, make sure A, you have really good GPS, lots of data, and lots of cash, because ATMs are not very common here, and they don't take debit cards, credit cards, anything like that. So time for a beer. Let's go. Now this is how you serve a beer. Bucket of ice, that's perfect. Honestly, this, this reminds me a little bit of Game of Thrones. Some of the scenes uh, remind me of the backdrop. This was a huge surprise. I didn't even realize this was part of the Airbnb. This is the view right literally outside my doorstep. And down below that cliff and beach right there is a secret beach. It has uh, very close access. No one can find it. So the owner actually okay. said he would uh, guide me down there and show me the hidden beach. lifetime exploring them all there's just and there's no one around like you have the whole space the whole beach to yourself it's just there's one after the next there's so many like this they just go on forever you know you got the ocean the sky that's it honestly I think this is how we are really meant to live like this among nature so this is um really cozy b and it's got a nice breakfast and uh amazing view while you have your, your morning coffee it's incredible i would recommend this place i love this place so breakfast and then we'll go uh do some diving in about a half an hour We've got a dive trip booked this great guy named Kip, he's Australian, and he has this dive center called Twin Dives. What are we gonna see? Uh, we see Panta sometimes. Okay. We see uh, Barracuda. Barracuda. Uh, any, any chance of sharks? Crocodiles? Uh, uh, bamboo sharks. Yeah, bamboo sharks. Yeah, you bamboo said sharks. reef sharks, you said, yeah, right? Yeah, I had my patty from 15 years ago. He was able to find it on the system, which really blew me away. I thought I was gonna have to do the whole course again. But you can get a full uh, diving course done probably in four days, and it's around four to 500 uh, US. Or if you already have your paddy, you just need a refresher course. So I just did my refresher, and um, it came back eventually. So the diving here uh, is some of the best in the world. You see there's a lot of shark sightings, a lot of uh, mantas, sea turtles, um, speed, there's a lot of coral reefs and shipwrecks, so you, you, there's just so many sites to explore, beginner, intermediate, and advanced, so there was so much to choose from. So you got, just did the first dive, now we're just resting here at uh, Nuiza and Panina. This is called Crystal Bay Beach, we just need a little break, so we got coffee and uh, palm trees, scuba diving. So by far this has been my favorite experience uh, out of all of the things I've seen in Bali so far. It's just been um, incredible and I'd recommend uh, these three islands is a must see when coming to Bali and uh, even if you don't dive uh, or surf there's still so much to see, secret beaches, beautiful people, uh, beautiful uh, stays, everything, Airbnbs, you name it. This place is uh, a real, real you just feel all your stress just melt away and uh, it was it was an awesome awesome experience